In this lesson, we're going to be learning about how to configure service level agreements and, and the whole of the timings feature within Side Sage CRM. I'm going to log on first of all as the system administrator. Now to illustrate the idea of service level agreements, I'm going to navigate now uh, to an existing company record. I'm just going across to uh, the company record for Gatecom. Now the service level agreements represent in Sage CRM the terms of service that would be applied to any customer service requests and it allows us to define what should um, happen for a customer and by when it should happen. So you can see here that um, I've allocated a service level agreement of gold to the company Gatecom, though uh, I can then pick uh, one of the, the values of the service level agreements that uh, might exist. Now we'll look in a moment at how we can set up a new service level agreement and that would be inherited by uh, our uh, company or it would be available for the company to pick. But I've set this to be gold and if I now switch over into, ta into the cases tab and start to create a new case, what we'll see here is that it's inherited the gold service level agreement. Now if I hadn't specified anything uh, at the company level, it would have inherited the default uh, service level agreement for uh, the application. But I can go ahead and I can now start to uh, create uh, this particular case. So I just need to fill in the information that is mandatory. And as I fill in all this, and save this, you'll see that there's something else that will kick in and it will remind us that something else needs to be done. And you'll notice that when it comes to working with a service level, service level agreement, we also have this concept of a service level severity. So the service level uh, is supposed to define here uh, the, the, the terms of what should happen when and the service level severity allows us to be able to say, well, actually the general terms of this, but specifically because it's this type of issue, uh, we have to work on this particular time frame. So we're allowed to have a time frame within a time frame. So I'll just choose a service level agreement and choose save. And what we would see, if I navigate now uh, up to uh, the company and look at the cases, we can see that the service level agreement has actually set uh, a number of different um, options. And, and one of the consequences is that the service level agreement has actually impacted, as the record is saved, uh, information that determines its service level status. And there's going to be a continual check being made uh, as we work with uh, the data to, to see whether or not the service level uh, status has uh, been, been missed or not. So we can see this actually if we come across into where I've logged on uh, now with Kylie Ward and we can see in this user's case there's a lot of records here that have broken the service level status or are coming up into this idea of a warning. So it's to do with setting up and configuring this. This is the point of the lesson that we're going to start looking at and understanding of what's involved here. So I'm going to go back into the uh, system administrators logon and I'm going to go into the administration screens. So I've come into the administration screen and I'm now going into the system area and I want to look at the timing screen. So I've come into administration, system timings and we're presented with the service level agreement area, the idea of the business calendar and holiday sets. Now I'll start actually with uh, the business calendar first of all because this is quite an interesting uh, idea. If I uh, look at this first of all and see how a standard week is being defined we can see here that the business calendar is used to allow us to understand that there are oh, eight and a half uh, working hours within each day. And so if 
something had a duration of 16 hours, well, it would represent nearly two working days. If it had a duration, if it was 24 hour period, when we're starting to stretch uh, over three working days then. This is because of the idea that each working day only has eight and a half hours within it. And so uh, that will allow us to work out and calculate information such as the duration of anything being in place. And you'll notice that there is a relationship between the business calendar and lead records and opportunity records. If I switch over into uh, this user screen, I'm going to log off as Kylie Ward and log on as another user called Susan May. And from here, I'm going to go and navigate to look at a company record and look at the existing uh, opportunities that have been in place and have a look at this training course example. And I can see within the tracking tab information that contains the duration. And these durations have been calculated using the information within inside the business calendar. So if it had tripped over into a number of, of days, then it would be using by default the uh, business calendar. If I return back into the system administration screen, we can see that this particular business calendar has been set as the system default. And that's why we have this idea of updating the lead records and updating the opportunity records as well. And if I switch over to look at the other example uh, calendar, we can see that here it's not the default, so it wouldn't be affecting the information for the durations in the case in the uh, leads and opportunities. So timings and business calendars are used for calculating duration in leads and opportunities. But they're also combined with something called holiday sets for the calculations associated with cases. And here, a holiday set allows us to uh, indicate which are the non-working days which may or may not be affected by a business calendar. So if I look here at the federal holidays for the United States, then we can see which are the non-working days. And different organizations may specify different uh, statutory holidays um, or may provide different organizational holidays as well. So if I come out of uh, this particular uh, holiday set, we can see that these act as another level of information that determines which are the working days, which are the working calendar items, and see how this can be combined with a business calendar, which determines the total working hours that are available to us, we can see this being used inside the service level agreements. Now, it's easier to understand how this starts to be applied if we go ahead and start to create a new service level agreement for ourselves. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create now a new service level agreement, and I'm going to call this Platinum. And I want to provide a 50% uh, warning percentage because uh, this 50% warning percentage is going to be used uh, when starting to calculate whether or not uh, we have breached or we're approaching a particular breach. Now, if we if we say for the severities that we're closing in, oh, uh, we want to close in um, 30 hours, in um, 20 hours, and in 10 hours, a 50% warning would, of course, for a high priority uh, uh, case which has to be closed in 10 working hours, it would indicate an error, it would indicate a, an issue at five hours. And I can associate uh, this with uh, the different business calendars that we have. So for example, if I want to uh, assume a 24 hour working day, uh, each day working, then I would choose the 24 by 7. And I may or may not want to 
uh, select a, a particular holiday set as well. So I'm going to choose the United States Federal Holidays and choose Save. Now the other items I'll come back to explain in a later lesson, the idea of these escalation points within each of the SLA timings. I'll come back to that uh, in a later lesson. But you'll notice that we are able to change SLA records and that's appropriate because if we have changed anything about the warning percentage or if we've changed the closing time then we would need to do that. And what this is affecting is the information that we saw when we logged on first of all as Kylie Ward. So if I look at Kylie Ward's records and see this information, the these records are typically associated with uh, the uh, default service level agreement, which is the gold service level agreement, and we can see that uh, the percentage warning is being applied uh, to see uh, to show that the amber warning is in place and anything that is breached the close in time, uh, the SLA status is showing that uh, we've broken that. If I switch back into uh, my page here and I come back up to the idea of the uh, timings, uh, what I can look at is the gold and I can look at my gold and we can see that we have got uh, the uh, business calendar and the holiday set set for this. We can start to see uh, the SLA timings including the close in timing. Now if I now, as a user, decide to create a new case, we'll see that the, or edit an existing case, we can see that the new service level agreement that we have created has been added to the drop down list. So we can see that we have platinum available here as well. In the next lesson, we will look at the idea of the action points within a service level agreement and we will see those uh, in action.